Jesus. You know, I usually enjoy most of the games I come that I come across in some way or another. That's one of the reasons why I question how I want to review games, because it's hard for me to really be critical. I try and focus more on how fun a game is in general, how enjoyable the story and systems may be, and how great the soundtrack is. Whether they work together or not, I usually find some enjoyment out of them, but few really stick with me. There aren't many that I want to go back to and do almost everything that I can not only to stay in that world, but to experience again. Even fewer take that experience and add new meaning to the events and quests that unfold. But this time you get the full picture. You know what it really means when a character says something kind of a certain way, or why they act the way that they do. Nier Automata doesn't just have that, it has an incredible soundtrack and smooth genre shifting gameplay that helps it all unfold and stand as one of my favorite games that I have ever played. Alrighty, so that was a pretty bold claim, yeah, but it's also my opinion. I will try and keep this as spoiler free as possible while explaining why I feel that way. There are five endings to the game, requiring you to play through it at least three times. At the end of the first, you will get a message urging you to play through the game again. Immediately, it is similar to the first time, but you do get a new perspective on certain moments extra story to otherwise fleeting parts of it. Then there's the third playthrough where everything comes together and pieces really start to fall into place. The story itself is simple enough, humanity has fled to the moon after aliens have invaded by unleashing an army of machines. Human humans and created androids to fight them in a war that has lasted centuries. You play as t androids 2B and 9S with each story thread becoming more complex. Questions are answered, but pave the way for more questions. It starts strong, then slowly fades, only to really pick back up again. It's kind of hard not to spoil anything when trying to give a good description of the story, but let's just say there are a lot of emotions, questions on why the fighting is still there. And that doesn't just pertain to the main quest either. The side mi missions range from minor ones to others that question the state of the world, is everything okay? Can you really just fight without having something to fight for? In a way, it gives a sense of the state the, that the world is in, not just from the story, but really every part of the game. Gameplay-wise, it's really a blast to play. Essentially, it mixes two to three, actually three to four different genres together. The main one being kind of an open world RPG, you get quests, level up, find weapons, and all that. Then there are times where it will just switch views to a side scroller or a top down view. They also throw in some on rail sections where you control a flight unit just for good measure, in case you are getting bored of everything else, of course. It's interesting how they really blend each seamlessly together. Part of that has to do with the fact that they do keep the controls similar for each section. The controls themselves are more action oriented. There is a light and strong attack with a weapon assigned to each one. The combos mainly change depending on the two weapons you have equipped. Having a small sword and a large sword will be a little bit different than having a small sword and a spear, for example. You have a pod that is constantly with you throughout the game as well. They act as another companion of sorts and have abilities of their own that you can also upgrade them. You can find others that have different firing modes and buy special moves to put on them and also find those. Then we have a plug-in system. You can buy and find different chips throughout the game and put them to pretty much put them on your Android. They can vary from stat boosts to your attack or movement speed all the way to adding a shockwave or even a counter. They even have ones that will increase the amount of experience you get. Combat itself is flashy and simple. 
it's a ton of fun when you get into the rhythm of timing your dodges and then unleashing a kind of a flashy combo. Two warnings I will say though, they do change it up a little on your second playthrough, forcing you to somewhat think differently. It's nothing too major, but it does take a second to get used to. The other warning is that it can become pretty easy later in the game, especially if you have done you know, most of the side quests. By the time you really truly finish the game, it was pretty clear that I was pretty overpowered by that point. Here they come. Better keep your guard up. I'm aware of how to fight. You just be careful. I will too be. Graphics wise, the environments have some variety to them. The map as a whole can seem small compared to other RPGs. They do use that to their advantage though. A ruined city with collapsed buildings, a desert, and even a forest or some of the areas you go back and forth to explore. With some underground areas as well mixed in there. Most everything will want to kill you but there is a main cap in some quest areas you can find that are kind of a safe zones really. Generally the view is a bleak future where humanity is no longer on earth and everything is war torn. Enemies do have some variety to them from smaller ones to towering bosses that act as a backdrop for some of the flight sections. Character models look good as well. You're not going to find extreme detail but it nobody really looks like they're plastic either. Most of the main cast has some, ni some nice detail to them and the bosses look great fitting se sections of the game that you are actually playing and that they take place in. Sounds are good, voice acting is really well done, it can sound a little stiff at times but even the machines have more mechanical sound to them they manage to even convey some emotion. The main cast does a great job with each character, some of them coming off as emotionless when they need to be, but at the same time not being able to help it when it's shown at the right times. All of these things kind of come and really show through the voice acting really well. The sound effects of the weapons clashing on metal are appropriate with a nice ring to them. You can tell what you're hitting and if it's projectile resistant, it'll give off a little bit of a different sound. Enemies give a slight sound effect whenever you they're about to attack. Both of these are small touches, but they are really appreciated. Then there is there is the soundtrack. It's nothing short of amazing. It almost perfectly accents every part of the game. Quiet at the right times, awesome during boss fights. Just the act of walking through an area can have great music playing in the background. The first time I was in the resistance camp, I just stood there for a bit just listening to the music. Certain zones do have their own track that fits extremely well. One highlight for me was the boss against and sort of an operatic machine the music can actually time in with her attacks making it all the more enjoyable one of the tracks has another kind of added chanting during one of the sections of the game it changes just a little but adds an awesome layer to something that you've already heard at one point going through the music part amusement park i'm sorry i did tell my wife that the music that was playing it was taunting creepy and beautiful all at the same time. It's weird, but some of that is not just through the main quest though. It does change briefly through some of the side quests as well. The entire soundtrack is extremely well done and sits as one of my favorites. Nier Automata is an amazing game with surprising with surprises throughout. The story is generally interesting, soundtrack is top notch, and the gameplay is amazing. Amazing. I just finished the true ending after close to 40 hours in. For reasons I can't spoil, I don't have my save anymore. Don't worry, it's really more of a choice. You don't actually have to do this. However, I will be glad to do the go through the game all over again and do it to try and get everything that I can, a lot of stuff that I actually missed. The game currently sits as one of my favorites at a solid 10. If you're more into action RPG oriented, I'd say it's worth it just for the combat sections and even the story alone. I did play this through the Game Pass, but honestly I would probably go ahead and buy it just so I could have it for whenever it leaves the Game Pass and I can actually still play it. But that should be it for this review. Again, this is 
really only the second review I've actually, full review I've actually done on this channel. Looking for some feedback on things I can improve, what may or may not have worked. I tried to make some minor improvements for for this video, but that should be it. I hope everybody, pray everybody has a blessed day, has a blessed evening, and I'll be praying everybody still has fun, but stay safe out there. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.